clearly talking about quadratic equations here. Um, this is this is section two one, and in quadratic equations, we've learned to deal with graphs of these pretty well when they were in the form that looked more like this: y or f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k where we would know, oh, the vertex is at hk, and this thing grows a times the normal rate of a parabola. In other words, when we played parabolic charades, for those of you who don't know parabolic charades, great game. You come into a room, you act like a parabola, and your classmates or teammates try to figure out what the equation of you is. This we would know we would shift to the right h, we would shift up k, and then our parabola would be steeper by a factor of a. If we have equation in that form versus this form, that it's pretty easy to know the vertex, know, know how to create a graph. So I need to complete the square on x. And to do that in this, I have to factor this 2 out, even though it is not convenient. So I get f of x or y equals 2 times x squared minus 1 half x. Notice if I distribute the 2 in, I get 2x squared minus x. I leave a blank. I'm going to bring the plus 1 outside. And then to complete the square, this is review, I take the b term, either 1 half or negative 1 half, it doesn't matter. I take half of that, divide by 2, or half of that, and I square it. So I get 1 fourth squared, or 1 sixteenth. And I put my plus 1 sixteenth right in here, but be aware, that is an invention of my own. That was not a part of this equation. If I was to distribute the two and combine terms, I would get a different value than my original function up here. So what I really just did by putting that plus 1 16th in there that didn't exist before, is I really just added 2 times 1 16th, or I really just added 1 8th to the right side of this equation. So I could come over here on the left, and add 1 8th to balance that, or I can subtract 1 8th over here. So basically, I, get, I, I gained 1 8th and I lost 1 8th. All's fine, but what I ultimately gained by this was this is now a perfect square. This is x minus square root of 1 16th, 1 4th squared plus 8 eighths minus 1 8 7 8 let's take a look so I have a vertex at positive 1 fourth and up 7 8 I call it the myvox most interesting value of X is 1 fourth because that is when we're squaring 0 if I'm not squaring 0 my values are going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger so that would indicate that my vertex should be when x is 1 fourth. If x is 1 fourth, this becomes 0 times 2 becomes 0, plus 7 eighths gives me my 7 eighths y value. So that's tough on this. I'm going to just still count every unit as 1 on my graph. I'm going to go to 1 fourth, 7 eighths, approximately right up in there. Okay. Now, we could go ahead and pick 0 and get out 1 and put in 2 and see what we get and put in 1 and see what we get. But I know that this parabola is growing at twice the rate of a normal parabola. And what I refer to as standard parabolic growth is simple. A normal parabola, when A is 1, goes to the right one, up one, goes to the right two, up four, right three, up nine, right four, up 16, right 10, up 100. So very, very simple to do this. If this is growing twice as tall, usually I go to the right one, up one. Now I'm going to go to the right one, up double that. So right one would get me to about right in here, up double that. So instead of up one, I'm up two. Left one would take me right over in here. Instead of up one, I'm up double that, up two. Normally in a parabola, so these are good points right here. Normally in a parabola, I go to the right two and up four, but now I'm double that. Right two up eight would take me all the way up into about here. Left two 
up eight all the way into about here. So I end up with this guy, which is my graph. I've got my vertex, and now I want x-intercepts, but x-intercepts, I don't have any. So x-intercepts, none. What does that mean? Well, what do we know about every single x-intercept on here? Every single x-intercept has a y equals 0 value. So if I was to set this equation, got a big mess here. Let me clean just a little bit of that up. If I was to set this equation up here equal to 0, and I tried to solve that, maybe by quadratic formula, I would get a negative discriminant. I can't make it equal 0. Um, other option for that is I could take this equation, as messy as it is, and try to solve that for x. So my first steps might be to go x minus 1 fourth squared equals, I'm going to go ahead and subtract 7 eighths, get negative 7 eighths, and then I have to divide by 2. So at that point, my next step takes square root. I would get plus or minus square root of a negative and like, oh, don't have any, don't have any zeros in this case. So there we are. Okay, sketch the graph and identify the vertex. Same problem. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at this one. We're going to have some similarities here. I want to go y or f of x equals, have to factor out negative 4, even if it wasn't convenient. I get minus 6x, leave a blank. I get minus 41 outside. I need half of 6, 3 squared plus 9. I have to balance that. I made this up. I didn't add 9, though. I really added negative 4 times 9. I really subtracted 36. So here's my balance. Add 36. y equals negative 4 times x minus 3 squared minus 5. So what have we learned? We've learned we have a vertex at negative, or excuse me, at positive 3, positive 3, negative 5. So positive 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5, right down here. I've learned this is not growing at standard parabolic growth. Standard parabolic growth, I'm going to repeat that on here, would be something like if I went over and up. Here's standard parabolic growth. Over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4, over 3, up 9, over 10, up 10 squared, up 100. But I'm growing at negative 4 times that. So now, instead of over 1, up 1, I'm over 1, down 4, all the way down here. Left 1, down 4. That's about all the room I have. And once again, we see we have no x-intercepts. Let's go through this process of what we would do if we were going to solve this equation, set this equation equal to 0. Give myself a little bit of working room here. So if I was going to set this equation equal to 0 and solve that for x, that's a horrible 0, um, I would get x minus 3 squared. My first step, I would add 5 across. I would divide by negative 4. I would take the square root, and hopefully at this point we would notice plus or minus square root of negative 5 fourths. Hopefully at this, this point we would notice that we have no solutions. But if I continue on, I could get x equals add 3, 3 plus or minus square root negative 5 on square root of 4, 2. And notice how this is looking like kind of a quadratic formula type answer. That's what I would get through quadratic formula if I went through this whole process. But there we see no x-intercepts. But clearly we knew that once we graphed. So it's nice to have our graph confirm our algebra. Okay, write the standard form of a quadratic equation. So I am looking to put this in. Y or F equals A times X minus H squared 
plus k. I want that form. Well, if they give me my vertex, I've already got this. y equals something times x minus the x-coordinate. So that's x minus negative or x plus one-fourth squared plus the y-coordinate plus negative one minus one. What I don't know is what multiplier is working here for me. So here's what I know. I've got a graph right now where my vertex is at negative one-fourth, negative one, right in this area. Okay? And now I just have to make sure that that graph hits this point, 0, negative 17 16 somewhere right in here. Okay, I might be accentuating that 1 16th, but my, my parabola has to hit that. Well, I can do that algebraically, believe it or not, I can do it from a graphic perspective as well. I'm going algebra first. I just have to force my parabola to go through that point. So at some time, when the y is negative 17 16th, try that again. When the y is negative 17 16th, the x value is going to have to be 0. So I get negative 17 16th equals, squared up here, excuse me, equals 1 4th squared 1 16th a, or a on 16 minus 1. You could go ahead and add 1 to both sides, get common denominator, smash together, multiply both sides by 16. I might be tempted to multiply both sides by 16 now. And then I get negative 17 equals a minus 16. Multiply both sides by 16, so we see that a equals add 16, negative 1. What, what's comfortable about that? Well, a being negative 1 means that my parabola is going to open up down, and that's confirmed over on my graph. To get from the blue point vertex through the red point, I have to go down. So now I can go ahead and graph by saying, well, this is normal parabolic, standard parabolic growth, but upside down. So I would go over one, over to here, down one, down to here. Left one, over to here, down one, down here. But ultimately my equation I know now is that A is negative one. Ultimately my equation is this. But check this out. This is pretty cool. If we understand standard parabolic growth, look what is happening right over here in green. We are going over this far, down that far. That is over just a distance of one-fourth, and we're going down a distance of one-sixteenth. Well, I've said standard parabolic growth is over 1 up 1, over 2 up 4, over 3 up 3 times 3, 9, over 4 up 4 times 4, 16, over 10 up 10 times 10, 100. What would over 1 fourth do? Over 1 fourth would be up 1 fourth times 1 fourth, 1 16th. So we see here that we are going over 1 fourth down, but down the expected value. So that would indicate down negative the expected value 1. A is negative 1 just based on looking at the graph and evaluating it that way. Standard parabolic growth is a wonderful tool to use that allows you maybe to avoid some algebra if you are more of a visual person. So pretty cool stuff. All right, and last problem on this video. Use a graphing calculator to graph the quadratic function. Well, I'm not going to do that part with you, but I can make a pretty reasonable sketch of this guy. And then I know that this thing is going through negative 21. This is sprinters, intermediate runners, distance runners, if you've been following along and seeing those videos. So I know it's going through negative 21 here. As it goes through, it passes the baton to a very, very steep, positive slope line. So this line is really, really steep, steeper than I'm showing here if this was a square graph. 
and then it wants to pass the baton and look like a positive parabola. So this thing's curving, even getting steeper here. And eventually this has to turn back up. So we would get a graph like that. Not exactly sure what our values are here, but most definitely we have a vertex down here. And most definitely we have two x-intercepts. So how do we find those by hand, the, the x-intercepts? Well, every x-intercept, no matter where we go, y is 0. So we set this equation to 0. And we have some options to solve this. I could complete the square, factor out a 4, even if it's not convenient, and then solve that for 0. But since I don't need to know the vertex, I would be more tempted to use quadratic formula. But maybe this thing factors. I would need two numbers that multiply to be negative 84, add up to be positive 25. I need a positive, I need a negative. Now, if you don't know exactly what I'm doing here in this factoring method, this is available on another video from uh, the Purple Shirted Nerd website. So you can, you can check that out. But 84, my choice is I need a positive, a negative. The positive has to be the big number. I could go with 84 and 1, but those add up, 84 and negative 1 add up to be 83, of course. I could go with 42 and 2, negative 2. I'm getting closer. Does 3 divide 84? 3 goes in there 28 times. Those are our magic numbers, which means if I can find those magic numbers, this thing factors. I need... An outside product to either be positive 28x or negative 3x. I get a negative 3 with a factor of 4 times a factor of 21. Oh, well, it's 1 from the 4 and 3 from the 21, but it has to be minus. And now, first term times first term, 1x times 4x equals first term 4x squared. Last term times last term equals last term, 7 times, or 3 times 7, but it has to be minus 21, so this is plus 7. My, it, this product must be minus 21, and we got it. If we set that guy equal to 0, we get x either equals negative 7, or add 3, divide 4, 3 fourths. So it kind of supports what I was seeing here. I have a I have a zero, excuse me, I have a zero over here at, let's try that again. I have a zero over here at three-fourths. And I've got one further to the left than that at negative seven, which, based on my graphing technique, at least makes me feel somewhat comfortable. So there you go, quadratics. I uh, hope that's helpful. Stay tuned. Again, if you're having trouble factoring the quadratics, then I do have a video on that. You can search that at my website.